Hi, this is Alan Gleason for ADSR. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel for regular tutorials. In this video, we will create a multi-kick sampler instrument, the first step in creating a versatile drum bank. Do you ever find yourself at the beginning of a track spending a lot of time auditioning kick after kick, snare after snare, and so on, looking for the perfect drum set to get you started? Using what we are going to look at today, the next time inspiration strikes, there will be no more sifting through thousands of drum sounds. Using this method, you can recall your favorite kicks or any drum sounds quickly and audition them on the fly, staying in the flow of creativity. So the first step is loading a sampler device onto a MIDI track. Now I'm going to load my kick drum samples in, so I'll open up my zones and I'll go to my kicks folder here at the side. Using this method, you can load at least 127 samples, one sample for each zone on your keyboard and even more if you wanted to get into velocity switching. I'm going to start off by using 10 samples and the idea with this technique is you're picking your favourite samples that you might want to use for an EP or an album or whatever kick drum sounds that inspire you in some way. So I'll select all my samples and drag them over to my zones. The area that I want to address in my zone area is the select zone. So when I select this I can see the range of values that are going to select that sample. So at the minute, if I put this to small, I can see that the range from 0 to 127 is going to trigger all of these kicks. Because we only want to trigger one kick at a time, I need to assign each sample to its own particular select zone. So the first thing I'll do, because all the samples are selected, go to the far right corner and I'll get my square bracket and then I'll bring all these down to zero. So now they're all occupying a single select zone, but all the same select zone. So I'll just change the size here again. So the idea is that you give each sample its own select zone. So if you're using a lot of samples, this can be a bit time consuming to begin with. But once you've done it, then you can save this kick drum bank and you won't have to do it again. So now I need a method to be able to select between these different zones that I've set up. So in order to do that, I'll put my sampler into an instrument rack. So I can right click and select group or just use the shortcut command and G. So I'll view my macro controls. So now I want to assign one of these macros to select between the different samples that we're going to actually use. So I just right click in the ruler here and I can map it to a macro. So I'll put it to macro 7 say. So now when I scroll between these, I can see that it selects a different zone. And if I trigger the sample, I get a different sample every time. The reason that they're all pitched down at the minute is because the root key for all of these samples and by default when you load a sample in is at C3. I'm not going to worry about this now because this is only the first step in creating our drum bank. So I'll rename this as kicks and now I'll put this into a drum rack. So I can't use the command G because that would just put it into an instrument rack. I'm going to put it into a drum rack. Once I've done that, you can see that it's loaded our kick drum sampler instrument onto C1. So now when I trigger, I'll get the sample at the correct pitch. And if I go between the different samples, they all play at the correct pitch. So now what I want to do is assign this sample select control to the top level of my drum rack instrument. So I'll open up the macros here and I'll assign this to macro one. And then I'll rename that kick select. So now I can change it from here. And so on. At this stage now you can go back to your kick drum macro and you might set up some of these macros to shape the kick drum sound. So you might go into your say your filters and assign the cutoff to macro one, maybe add a bit of saturation, put that to macro two. You might want to have control over the attack and decay to shape the sound. So you might put that to macro three, and macro four, and then I'll go back to my top macro and just set those values to their defaults by clicking and hitting backspace on each of them. So now when I trigger my kick, I can maybe shape the sound. I'm going to take the sustain down. filter it a bit or I could add a bit of saturation. You could continue to add more macro control there depending on how you want to shape your sounds. On the top level of the drum rack I might want to add some send and return effects so I'll turn on my returns and I'll go to my favorites here and I'll drop in my convolution reverb. You might want to grab something like a ping pong delay whatever your favorites are and then you can turn on your sends to have them accessible. And then you can save that as your multi-drum rack. So now that you've got your kick drum set up, you could then go back to your instruments, grab another sampler, drop one in here, and start the process again. This one could be your snares. 
Then you could do another one for claps, hi-hats, cymbals, toms, whatever you want. All your favourite sounds in a single drum instrument with easy access to the different sounds and be able to load them on the fly. An example of what it might turn out like, this is one that I've prepared earlier. In this one here, I've got a kick, snare, clap, hi-hat. I've got all my sends available, a couple of different reverbs, a couple of different delays, all my macros assigned, a couple of different filters, an EQ to shape the body of the sound, compression, pitch, attack and decay and overall volume so that when I play my drum pattern I can quickly change up the sound if I'm happy with that I can come over to my rack maybe start shaping the sound a bit back to my top level maybe go in and have a look at the snare Add a bit of tone, add a bit of glue, then I might go on to my, say, have a look at my other sounds that have been used. Go into my clap, then maybe pitch it a bit, maybe fit in a bit more, and so on. So it allows you to program your beat and then keep in the creative flow by auditioning different sounds on the fly, changing the tone of them, tweaking the sounds. If you wanted to, you could add more layers to each particular chain, say in my kick drum. If I felt that I wanted to have an option to add a sign tone to this, sometimes what I do is I'll grab something like an operator and I'll drop that in there. So when the kick has been hit, it's now going to trigger the operator and then I'll put that to fixed frequency and I'll dial in whatever, whatever frequency you want. You might put that in there to a frequency in the key of your song or just depending on how you want to maybe make it even a bit of noise want to add a bit of click to the front of the kick. So I find this a very useful tool to have when you want to stay in your creative flow. It's worth spending a bit of time setting it up in the beginning and it's something that will evolve over time from track to track, from album to album and from performance to performance. So hopefully you found something useful in this video. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel for regular tutorials. This has been Alan Gleason for ADSR and I'll talk to you again next time.